one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first thing on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Make a, motion. Make, a, make a motion to approve the agenda is in front of us. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, first thing up is information items, capital and non-recurring projects presentation. Sid, is that you, I believe? Carla. Myself and Ms. Cole. Oh, all right, Carla as well. Did we not need it? Oh, we did need it. Yeah, uh, before I, we... I don't think it was on the agenda, Ms. Cole. No, it's okay. Um, to... Pursue, just, I'm sorry, okay, so before okay. you start, I won't take a second. Uh -huh. That pursuant to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in a closed session to comply with the specific constitutional, statutory, or judicially imposed requirement that prevents public disclosures about a particular proceeding or matter. We did that before this open um, session. Thank you. All right, guys, you're on. Thank you. All right, well, good evening, President Schifanelli, um, Dr. Salem, board members, for the record. I'm Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. And I'm Carla Pullen, Facilities Planner. And we are here before you tonight to uh, present to you um, our capital and our reoccurring projects, along with some um, in-kind projects that we have listed. What we're going to show you tonight has changed already, and I don't want to get in and steal Ms. Poland's thunder, um, but we received news around two o'clock this afternoon, um, actually very positive news. Um, so some of the information you see tonight is, is not fully accurate um, based upon some of the numbers, but um, again, this is just giving you kind of a large overview of what projects we're anticipating to take on. You've seen this before, so it's not really something that should strike you as, I've never seen that one before. All right, we're going to do this. No, they don't let me. Let me have this one. Try to read. All right, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. So you may recall that I was here back in October to talk to you about our capital improvement plan, and that entails everything that we are requesting from the state for the next seven years, what our anticipated funding requests will be. For fiscal year 24, we had three priorities. We were looking at the Ken Island High School roof replacement. You'll remember that we had bid that. It came in over budget. We needed to go back for additional funding. The second thing we were looking at was for some design funding for Centerville Middle School. The state now participates with some of that planning money, and so we wanted to take full advantage of that. And the third one was the Kennard Elementary School fire alarm replacement. When the state came back to us at their 75% allotments, it was not looking very positive for us. We were getting only a portion of that first priority, Ken Island High School roof. And so some of what you'll see tonight was budgeted around that and looking at the possibility that maybe we would have to move some projects out to next year. The good news that we got today at 2 p.m. is that the state has additional money. The governor has indicated that he wants to put more funding towards school projects, and therefore it appears that we are going to get funding of some sort for all three projects. So it's a very good problem to have. However, our numbers are going to look a little bit different when we come back to you in March because we need to make those updates and we need to make sure that everything goes through at that 90% and then that 100% allocation that the state will be making. So what we're showing here is fiscal year 24 projects. Of course, the Ken Island High School roof replacement. So we have funding coming from the state. We anticipate that it is going to be funded in all, which will be 4.845 million. So the additional request that we are going to be asking from the county is 2.5 million. This is in addition to 2.4 million that they had lauded to us several fiscal years ago for this project. They were kind enough to keep that in reserve for us. And so the 2.5 will bring us up to our 50% mark that we need to match the state funding. The second project we're showing here is the track resurfacing. You may recall that we did the Ken Island High School track resurfacing in partnership with the county this year. It turned out wonderfully. I think the school, the students are all very appreciative. We'd like to do the same thing at Queen Anne's County High School and the county is on board with us for that. You know, we've been talking to you in regular increments about the new central office building. We are going to start looking at that construction budget. We are on target for breaking ground 
about this time next year. We would love to do it earlier if we can, but that will require us to have some construction funding so that we can get this under contract in fiscal year 24. Along with that, we wanted to get some numbers in front of you for technology, which would be replacement of computers, as well as new furniture for the building. We're looking at about 2.5 million for those costs. And then the Centerville Middle School design that I indicated, we weren't sure that this was going to come through. It does appear that although they will not fully fund it, we had asked for 1.8 million, the state is going to come through with just shy of 1.7. So that will get us a really great start along with the county's commitment of 2.159 million. So that's, you're talking 4 million for a design. Yes, yes. So what this will allow us to do, so you may recall that there are plans for a feasibility study as well as ed specs for Centerville Middle School. What we would like to do, and some of that is already funded, is that we're gonna roll that project directly into the design. So the design team for us would start with the ed specs. They're gonna write that recipe, they're gonna take that recipe, and then do a feasibility study on whether it's going to be more cost efficient and best for us in long term if we renovate the existing building or if we build new and what those costs look like. And from there, we roll right into the design process. The reasoning behind that is that the state is now paying for some of this and we definitely want to take advantage of that. If we're building new, what's the location? We, we likely, believe it would I mean, be, that will be a part of the study in and of itself, but likely on the same property behind it. We know that All the- All panels are? No, no. Like behind the bus loop area, gotcha. there's, there's some available space there. At this point, the county does not have any other land set aside for us for a new middle school building. I mean, they have to do uh, all, they have to do soil samples and uh -huh. I mean, they have to do so much. It, it sounds like it's really easy, but the feasibility in and of itself is very complicated and, and it's a process, it takes time. It'd be great because I mean, you know, we, we likely could predict what it's gonna be based on other projects we've done. But, um, but really it's a process and by law, you kind of have to check the different boxes before you get to the end result. Exactly. Right. And we, we want to let the process actually take, take place. Yes, but we, I feel we like, want to get to know, the bottom with, of it. With um, being able to get additional funding on a quicker timeline, I feel like we're, we're literally probably going to be able to move into that building a, a whole year earlier than we would have been before. So that, that's the good news is that, you know, that, that's going to impact staff and students. Um, in a positive manner a whole year prior to, which is great. And one of the things that we're working with Dr. Salins to do is to work with the IAC to get some of those conversations started now. The IAC and through the Maryland Stadium Authority have a prescribed amount of money that they set aside based on the numbers that we have used in the past. So it looks like we would probably be eligible for about 2 million from our regular CIP and probably another 1.5, 2 million from the stadium authority and the funds that are available there, we're going to need probably $40 million for this building. We're looking at a new building cost and a renovation cost that's gonna be very close to $40 million. <laughs> if you look at $4 million of allotment every year, that's gonna take us a long time to get there. We understand that there may be some other channels. We understand that if we get this project on the radar of the state, that maybe we could get some flexibility in that too. So we wanna start having those conversations to see where we are with and funding. And I feel like they're broadening the spectrum of what they're actually paying for. So before like your soft costs were 100% just on the district and now they're starting to give us some funding towards some of the soft costs, which are your design phase, just, just like uh, Carla was just sharing. Um, so before they would never give us money for that, but now we're actually getting some of those monies too. So the overall project being $40 million, if we can get little costs here and there on before the project starts and after, because there's actually stuff, you know, you gotta put furniture in a building, you gotta have technologies in building and things like that. So if we can get additional funding for some of those soft costs, it's gonna ultimately reduce the overall costs to the district, um, you know, which is a good thing. So with that, I am going to show you what our fiscal year 25 projects look like and start out with a caveat that for fiscal year 25, the Kennard Elementary School fire alarm, we had anticipated we would probably have to move this to 25. It now sounds like the state is going to come through with that funding for 24. So we're gonna revise that. What I will say about this is that that number is going to look much, much smaller when it moves to the 24 uh, timeline. 
we're only anticipating that we're going to have to add uh, probably another $150,000, $200,000 for that project. So it's not massive in terms of an additional cost for this fiscal year. Um, but that allows us to get it done quicker and probably at a, a better cost than if we prolong it for another year. So that's one of the changes that you'll see. <coughs> in fiscal year 25, based on our assessment that we've done of all of our buildings, we are looking at the necessity to replace the roof at Mattapeak Elementary School. This is much of the shingled area as well as the low slope modified that we would like to replace and potentially look at going to a metal just like we are doing at Ken Island High School, a little bit more durable, longer warranty span, uh, especially being right there beside the bay. Queen Anne's County High School, fire alarm replacement, that will come into play as well. That's another necessity that is also, uh, we've come to end of useful life. Basically on that system, it's difficult to get parts. Our guys are trying to order off market and we're never in a good situation when we're dealing with life safety. So we wanna get that prioritized. And then we're looking at the second half of the new central office construction as part of fiscal year 25. Fiscal year 26, this is where we start to plug in some numbers for Centerville Middle School. Again, we would hope to see those numbers come from both the state and the county, but we'll have more updates for you as we go forward. Probably funding over this over a two to three year period just to be sure that we have those available amounts. And then along with that, we're gonna try to keep it um, a lower budget because we have such a high cost and do some HVAC replacement at Kennard Elementary School. Many of our schools have never had full HVAC replacements, so you'll see that from us in the upcoming years as we start to think about HVAC systems now getting to be 20 years old and we need to get them more modernized. And we just have one on here for fiscal year 27. We know that Mattapique Middle School after Mattapique Elementary School is going to need that partial roof replacement. And so we're starting to budget out for that now. Carla, would we see um, <coughs> additional monies in that capital year for the middle school? Potentially, okay. yes. Depending on where that actually falls, we would again look at two to three years. Okay. So yes, we would want to tag that into 27 and maybe 28. Okay. Thanks, Paul. I have this question about the fire alarm. So the, we're trying to replace the fire alarm at Kennard and at Queen Anne's County High School? Yes. What's the disparity in the monies? It's actually just an incorrect number that we gave you for Kennard Elementary School, and I double-checked that today. The one that we just uh, went under contract for Churchill Elementary School, we had to approve 203,000, so we had a mistake in that number. It should have been 142 as opposed to the additional mm -hmm. number on there, so that's the disparity. Yeah, but Well, like Kennard's costing us almost 1.5 million. Whereas Quinnens County is costing us half a million. That's where it oh, just should have been. Okay. That's where the mistake that we, there was an extra digit that we realized after the fact. So again, it will be under $200,000 that we oh, will be asking okay. for the county when we move that to the 24 budget. Yep. My apologies for and the I'm confusion sorry, on that one. I was a little slow on that one. <laughs> oh, you're good. And on the uh, final slide, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the non reoccurring and uh, in kind projects that we have listed. Um, basically for the next uh, three physical years. Um, if you recall, last year we had uh, Queen Anne's County, um, the county commissioners um, allotted about $500,000 to mill and repave the Queen Anne's County High School um, parking lot. That 500000 will take um, the entrance and then the teacher's parking lot and then the parking lot that goes all the way back to the stadium. Um, <clears throat> for FY24, we're seeking to do the second phase of that. Um, that would be the bus parking lot um, and then moving down towards the, uh, the tennis courts and behind the school where all the CTE programs are. Um, that's about 25 years old or so, last time that that was, had anything done to it. FY24 also includes the Ken Island High School um, install and make up air units. We have three units there that um, they no longer make parts for and we do have a matching um, grant that we were awarded by the uh, state um, department to put towards that. So we will be seeking another $85,000 to put towards that matching part of it that we were awarded. Um, also in FY24 will be universal pre-K. 
again to get the um, the full day uh, pre-k program up and running and then when you look at the other two um, FY24, the Soldiersville Elementary School replacement of playground equipment and also the Mattapique Elementary replacement of playground tile. We need to have a, a line item in here each year for these playgrounds. And it, it's actually interesting. I went back to my notes and started requesting this back in 2018. And this is something that's been kicked down the road, kicked down the road, kicked down the road. Now we're at the point if you're trying to get pre-K accreditation, are we meeting the, you know, the, uh, the guidelines set forth? All of our playgrounds are inspected every year by a certified playground inspector, but there is a life cycle for them. Um, and this is something that's not, um, it's not cheap process. I mean, as you can tell those numbers right there, you know, another year or two, you might as well add another 10, 15, 20% on top of that. Um, so, the playground replacement is really an item that we need to have a conversation with the county about um, and also maybe non-reoccurring projects with the state. Um, if not, again, we're going to just keep kicking it down the, the, uh, you know, the list. Um, we have an FY25 Churchill replacement of playground equipment ages uh, two to five, $350,000. Um, believe it or not, in FY25, we have the replacement of stadium lights at the high school. Um, those there are around 30 years old. I believe it was the mid to late 80s they were installed. Um, and one of my biggest fears is we're having a game and, you know, we lose lights. We've been replacing the light bulbs, bulbs but again, you have a life cycle cost, um, you know, to put LED lights in there. The county does the same thing with their ballparks. Uh, they've just completed quite a few of them. Um, the majority of the cost is going to be coming from not just the lights, but it's going to be, you know, putting new poles in there also. Um, so we, we're going to present that to the county. And then in FY25, we would like, again, like to do the same um, Canalan High School paving and milling first phase. Um, FY25, we also have the classroom furniture for $200,000. And then FY26, we would like to do the stadium lights there and then keep going with the second phase of um, the milling and paving at Ken Island High School. And then basically the last project we were requesting um, would be replacement of playground equipment, again, pre-K pre -K accreditation um, at Ken Island uh, Elementary School. So what, we're, what we've tried to do for many years is keep a steady item for the county. I mean, obviously when you start building a new school, it's gonna jump up, you know, 10, 15, 20 million. But some of our in-kind um, projects that we worked with, we try to keep it steady so that they kind of know what we're coming back with year after year and not a surprise. Of course, I can't guarantee you that because you never know what's going to, you know, malfunction. And uh, j just to clarify, yes, so like with in-kind, it's really because our stadiums are not just used for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, we have community that use our stadiums um, for all kinds of things and you know parks and recs uses our facilities for all kinds of things and so these are our projects that um, really are more of like a community-based project because not only are they helping the school district but they're really helping the community mm -hmm. so I want to make sure that everybody understands why they're considered in kind yep. um, because they're not just used by our school district they really are a community opportunity um, you know, to partner with different people in the community. No, I think the investment the county made with our turf fields shows that they're looking mm -hmm. at tournaments and other things in yeah, here exactly. with parks right. and yeah, rec. Yeah, we have all kinds of and, things. And uh, yeah. I guess my one concern would be when you do these lights, we get something that's going to be standard to, you know, you can replace stuff and not, I mean, it's good to bid it low, but you need to, don't want to get something that, you know, bulbs come out of China every other day. And, you know, so <laughs> I don't know that LED are made anywhere else, are they? Well, I'm just talking about, you know, it's, it's not a, you know, something standard, maybe with Parks and Rec with us or something well, that's not yeah. the... The numbers that we've provided to you for this are from standard people. Yes. <clears throat> I do have a question, though. I know that we had kind of touched on it before when we were talking about when we, we replaced them somewhere else, didn't we? Did we replace the lights uh, last year or the year before somewhere else? Or maybe we just talked about it? We... We have replaced um, through different grants um, that the uh, electric companies right, so um, have helped out. Parking yes. lights. So, so that's it's what actually I'm yes. interesting yes. you say that because we did apply for a grant um, to help pay for this and we did not 
get the grant. So, mm. um, but we did apply for it. But if you if you actually look at where you get your charge from the stadium lights is when you first turn them on, basically. After that, it's it's you know it's not we're as paying extreme. For the lights. Right. Yep. Yep. And so that was the program that I know that a lot of businesses took advantage of the Del Delmarva had. They just gave you the lights um, because it was helping their grid as well. So, mm -hmm. OK. Right, and then cool. also wanted to add that, um, you know, we've been um, received some money for some expansion to pre-K and we're doing our best to use what monies we can from that to try to put towards um, the playground equipment. Um, but it's just more than what we're getting from the state. So we are using some grant monies, but um, it's not enough to cover all the costs of the need that's out there. And again, the can's been kicked down a little bit, so we're not in a great, it's you know, a pretty much deferred cost at this point that we're dealing with. And if we can get them on a cycle, I'm sorry. Yeah, on a cycle. Interesting concept about the in-kind because the community's using it because then it feels as if there, if there are some um, age-restricted communities because they're still community that they may need to be paying some of that APFO monies that they're not paying. It's something maybe to, to think about since it's not just your schools who are in, um, taking advantage of the facilities. I need a question on the one of the items for the new facility, um, it talks about replacing all of the elect electrical computer and furniture. Not everything in this building needs to get pitched, so what are we going to do with it? Most likely repurpose to one of our other buildings. So anything that still has some sort of life cycle will either go with us to the new building and or be repurposed at another facility. And, talk, and since the county will own the building when we vacate some of the stuff they might have in their different senior centers or somewhere might need some of the uh, it, things they could redo it with too. That's a potential, yes. Thank Any you. other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. <clears throat> okay, there's no action items on the agenda. Future meeting will be March 1st for our regular scheduled meeting, right? March 1st? Correct. And motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.